What's up? All right, so this is a video for the Fantasy Baseball League this year, Stirrups and Sunflower Seeds. Uh, just a little bit of overview. i got about two minutes here uh, before I'm going to begin this video in its entirety. It's going to be short and sweet and to the point. This is a mock draft. Hopefully this is going to show those of you who are new to the auction draft exactly how this is going to work and how you can use this to play into your favor about how you want to set up your team. So here's a few things about the league that we got this year. 12 teams. We're doing head-to-head -head categories with one win. There's 13 categories, uh, seven of them hitting, six of them pitching. Whoever wins the categories, the most categories for that week, gets the win for the week. Uh, and we have a bunch of people who are not new to this this year, so it should be a very competitive league. Um, other things, uh, there will be minimum uh, amount of innings pitched per week, so that's something to think about. There are 23, I believe, if I counted right, 23 roster spots, two injured list spots. So think about that when you're drafting. If you get someone on the 60-day IL, you know, if you want to keep them there, like that, that might be something you want to consider um, just with the limited roster space and injured list space. So you got to be creative with how you use it. There, however, are five bench slots. So if you want to keep injured players on your bench, you can do that. Um, but there's 23 position spots, uh, as it should be, in two injured spots. And then here's the batters categories. We have runs, hits, home runs, runs batted in, sack hits, uh, strikeouts, and net stolen bases. So that should be the total of stolen bases gotten versus the amount of times you get caught stolen bases. So you want to stay in the positive there. Uh, and then there's pitcher stat categories, innings pitched, wins, strikeouts, earn run average, quality starts, which I believe is like six innings pitched with less than three runs. I'm not mistaken. And then saves plus holds. So here is a mock draft that we are doing right here. Um, should be set up. It says drafts now loading. Uh, in this mock draft here, this is supposed to be an auction draft. I will be picking second, and we're going to kind of see how this works. Uh, this year, uh, me and Tyler will be serving as co-commissioners. Um, I have done an auction draft once in my life. Uh, I like it. I think it's a fair way to do it. I think it's a pure way to do it instead of just rewarding people based on random luck of the draw. Uh, if you want to go get a guy, like go use your money and get them. Because here's the thing. You're going to start with a certain amount of points or credits or dollars, whatever you want to say, uh, call it. You're going to start with a certain amount. If you don't use that, it doesn't help you the next year. So, like, one thing you want to consider is, and this is part of, you know, should be everyone's strategy. You don't want money sitting around at the end of the draft. You want to use it because it does you no good to hang on to it. As you can see here, the draft's still loading, so I'm kind of just rambling a little bit here. Uh, but here's what the draft will look like when we get in. You should get a nice little, uh, looks like City Field back there. Wrong team. Uh, but anyways, okay. So if we look, all right, we got the draft starting soon. Let me see if I can move some of this. I got stuff all in the way. What in the? I want that. Let's move this. Let's see here. I'm trying to see. Here. Okay, so when you start the draft, if y'all follow my mouse right here. You start with $260. Now, the cool thing is, is it shows you the projected amount of money, and I think that also shows you per, um, basically, how many people are in the league. Like, if there's only eight teams in the league, of course, that projected price would probably be higher based off of uh, supply and demand principles. Uh, but if um, there's more people in the league, that number's probably lower so it's telling me here, here's the average amount of money that's been spent on Trey Turner, who is projected number one right now uh, for the start of the year based off his overall stats. But right here, that's the projected money. So what I would assume is whoever is going to start this draft right here, um, they will probably throw a number out somewhere in that ballpark. Um, one thing that you need to consider when you're doing this, you need to take who you nominate very seriously, please. Um, don't nominate people that nobody wants. Because I think if you nominate them and nobody, you know, picks them, then you get them. You can't waste your nominations. And we want to move this thing as quickly as possible, too. So let's see what this guy does right here. 
So they're throwing Trey Turner. They did 75. So, like, let's say I wanted to vote on him or get him, right? I'd make it 46. And we'll see what happens. Someone went 47. I can tap this and go 48. Let's see what happens. And then I'm going to get the second one. Oh, someone went 49. Let's go 50, just for fun. I'm going to leave it there. All right, 55. That guy really wants him. I'm going to let him have him. And then my guy, I'm going to put up, let's see, where'd he go? I'm going to put up, like, Juan Soto or something. All right, I'm going to nominate Juan Soto. Juan Soto, his average projected price is close to 50. I'm going to let this guy rock for a minute. I'm going to bid. Remember, you get $260. <clears throat> when you run out of money, guys, um, it's over. Like, your draft is over. You have to pick up from waivers after that or, like, the free agents. So, just something to consider. So, right now, I have him at 49, which is about his average price. Let's see if someone upbids. So, see, right there, that means I would have picked up an outfielder. So, if you look at my mouse right here, now you can see exactly who you've picked up in the draft. Catcher, first base, second base, third base, short. You get outfield spots. Doesn't matter which position they play. Kyle Tucker right here, another outfielder. So, you know, the thing is, if you want to use all your money in the first round, you know, that that's your choice. Um, maybe a risky play, uh, but you could do that if you wanted to. I'm going to upbid it. Let's see what happens because I'm literally leaving this draft as soon as I get my points made. But, yeah, that's how it works, right? Right now I have him. So, yeah, there we go. So, you know, if I did that, I probably don't want to spend any more money for a while. I've nearly spent two, you know, uh, about two-fifths of my budget, just about. So, something to consider, you know. I'd probably sit out for a little while, make sure that I'm saving my money. Now, remember, you don't want to save all of it because that would hurt you. But some other things, too, like I think if I'm not mistaken, you can look at teams right here, right? So, whoever AD is, these are just random guys right here that I'm doing this with, but Jim, right? Jim still has $260 in his budget. I can click around. Let's say I get in a bid more with Michael, right? And I look, and Michael's like, oh, this Hunter guy, he's, he's under, you know, 150 Like, he knows he can outbid me, right? So, that might be part of the strategy, you know? If I'm going back and forth with Tyler in the draft or, or John in the draft, right? That might be something I need to consider is who I'm bidding against. So, a Bo Bichette's now on the list. Like, so I look, hey, I need a shortstop, right? And it also shows right here, if you can see behind the picture, um, exactly, whoops, uh, yeah, exactly who's done what. It's kind of behind the picture. I'm going to bid right here on Bo Bichette just for fun. Because, see, what I need is I realize I need a shortstop. I don't have it. This guy must really like Bo Bichette. If I want to mess with him, I'll up the offer, right? He might be like, this dude's crazy. See? I just made people up, uh, waste their money right there. So if someone really, really wants someone, right, you can play that game with them. Just don't play it with me. No, I'm kidding. But anyways, um, hopefully this has kind of helped me clear up. Here's the draft results. It shows exactly who did what. Antonio, me, Antonio Brin. I don't know these guys, but I'm sure they mean well. I'm sure they're having a great night. Uh, but Ronald Acuna is now on the list. And look, I can look at this, and it's going to show exactly like the uh, – well, where'd he go? Where's his name? Acuna. Someone got him for a steal right there, I think. Um, but that's just something to consider. He was doing what? Now, let me explain this to you. Utility, if you're new to this, I and mean, we don't have many newbies. Mo most of us have played before, and if you haven't, welcome. It's fun. Try not to get addicted too soon like uh, the rest of us do. But utility right here, these are guys that play any position. Like, for example, if I have another first baseman, I could take Vlad Jr. right here, and I could put him as a utility. Also, he doubles as a first baseman or a utility, so that's something to consider, right? Uh, let's see who they put out next right here. If you don't know what some of the stat categories are that I mentioned, like saves, holds, quality starts, do a little research ahead of time. Make sure that you know what those things are so when, uh, you know, your time comes uh, to, to, you know, try to compete. You know what those things are that's going to help you. Also, please don't do this. Uh, try to Let's try to keep the thing moving. So, like, when um, you're, like, sitting around, you know, you're not making a YouTube video or something, uh, try to come up with, like, who you want next. So, like, what I might do 
is I might make a list, right? There's a way you can do this. So I might like click on Freddie Freeman. So let's say I, and I'm not going to put him out there because my philosophy is don't draft Dodgers, right? We don't like LA. San Diego. All right. But I might put him on my queue, right? So I'm going to click this star right here, add to queue. And that means basically it'll auto submit that. Like if I don't click anything after 20 seconds or whatever, it'll throw that in. Uh, also, there's people that do this. Like once they've gotten their team pretty much filled out or the, the you know, 10 guys they want, they'll sometimes just let the auto draft happen. I don't recommend that because sometimes you get a steal like in the last few rounds. So if you're willing to like be patient, it, it works out well. But here's something you need to consider too. Like we want this draft to last like an hour, not like three. So, uh, you know, upbid when you feel the need to upbid. But also, you know, you need to consider too. Like there's people waiting. There's people who, you know, probably want to go to bed, whatever, because we're starting this thing at 730. But anyways, that's pretty much all I got. You know, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, text me or whatever. Uh, those of you in this uh, league. That I'm making this video for. Uh, hopefully, it's somewhat informative of what's going on. Uh, also, let's see what else. Positions drafted. Let's see what this stuff is. So, yeah, apparently, like, I, I wouldn't do this, but I have three outfielders right there. Um, See, and, like, Mookie Betts, he, he's on the list. Do I really need another outfielder? But the thing is, he also plays second. So, if I needed a second baseman, you know, I could sit there and mess around. and But the problem is, if you look at teams, right, let's click on my name. With my current draft strategy, my budget is so low. Um, and let's see, did I just get Mookie? I did get Mookie bets. So here's the issue, right? I have run out of money already. You know, if you're starting with $260, $85 in the budget, that is nothing to work with. So don't use my strategy. This is all simply to, you know, show y'all, hey, this is how the draft works. But if I only had $85 left, and look at my team. I have four guys in that many positions. I need to be smarter about how I draft, right? So just something to consider. It's going to be competitive. You know, if you really want a guy, drop that price up, you know, uh, and you want to drop the price up, make sure you get him, then do it. Uh but there's going to be opportunities for trades and stuff. Who you start the year with, it's not who you're set with. Something to remember. Um, I would even maybe look up a little bit on draft strategies on how you want to do this. But this should clear up a lot of questions for those of you who haven't done this before. I know about probably half of y'all have and half of y'all haven't. The one year I've done this, I liked it. I thought it was very fair, very reasonable. Didn't matter if you had the first pick or the last pick. Everyone's got a shot at that player if they want them. you got to be willing to outbid. So, anyways. If, uh, you know, you guys have no questions or anything, I will see y'all Sunday night, 730. All right, I'm going to end this video right here. Y'all have a wonderful night.